people should not die from anorexia. And I won't be happy until we can stop the deaths. However, tens of thousands of people die from eating disorders every year. But that is just a fraction of the 8 million deaths caused by mental illnesses. For 30 years, the common sense answer has been to invest more money into treatments. The problem isn't only that too few Americans are seeking mental health care. It's also that too many providers are failing to adequately pay for it. In 1986, Americans spent $32 billion on mental health care. Just 30 years later, in 2016, we spent over $200 billion, believing, as with most things, that you get what you pay for. It's a huge, huge business. I don't think most people understand that. Most treatment centers are for-profit and they're very big business. At one point, there were several facilities owned by Bain Capital, and a lot of those companies are also involved in the troubled teen industry, you know, in the alcohol treatment industry, the drug treatment industry. And so a lot of times they have treatment models that are based on 12-step and things like that that we actually know. We have evidence that they don't work, and yet we have entire industries built around them. According to a new article in The Atlantic, today there are more than 13,000 rehab facilities in the United States and 70 to 80 percent of them hew to the 12 steps. Is this the best thing for people to do, particularly, as you note, now that Medicaid will be paying for recovery? Since 2008, Congress has passed four acts demanding insurers pay for an increasing number of mental health treatments. Together, these new laws are pumping an unprecedented amount of money into the industry, making mental health services an attractive investment opportunity. Mental health parity was the beginning. We saw a big benefit, and then the Affordable Care Act was very positive for our industry. They are private companies, they're for profit, they're private equity owned, which means there's just very little regulation, there's little need for transparency. In any business, your biggest cost is labor. That's always your biggest cost. You know, your facility, the lighting and all of that kind of stuff is a fairly fixed expense. So the way to save money is with people. Doctors who serve as medical directors for the clinics. One doctor in particular is medical director at more clinics than anyone else. But as we discovered, under the law, he doesn't actually have to see any patients. The majority of therapists that are available have the minimal training and education to become qualified. You can basically go to your insurance panel and, and do a checkbox that says, I treat eating disorders. And then all of a sudden, you're going to show up as someone who treats eating disorders. You do not have to say, I have done an accredited internship or postdoctoral fellowship or whatever um, in the treatment of, of eating disorders. So in that sense, it is sort of the Wild West. It is unregulated. Lots of people hang their shingles out. Trust me. I'm a doctor. Who should not have shingles hung. In many states, you don't even have to have a bachelor's degree to become an addiction counselor. We are putting some of the sickest people in our society in the hands of some of the least skilled people. If you go to a lot of these treatment centers, they're high school graduates with no training. Many for-profit residential and outpatient programs increase revenue by moving money from their human services into their marketing budget. It is not uncommon that for-profit treatment centers employ more people in their outreach and marketing departments than licensed clinicians. 